Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is a new video on Payload CMS. In this video, I am going to show an example of how to create a custom component that manages two related uh, select fields. I'll go from a app perspective first, and then I'll show the source code. So we'll start off with the demo. Please make sure you like, subscribe. I've been generating a lot of Payload content based on experiences that I have with a recent project that we've had with Payload. We just finished our third client deployment of Payload. Most of my videos are based on those experiences. Okay, so let's take a look what we have. So I have this ticket component. And so you have a car, a Ford, which is a make, and then it has models, a Mustang or a Focus. And then if I switch from Ford to Honda, it resets this select and it shows me the different Hondas that I can select. Also, if you notice down here on the bottom, the UI is updating as I add and remove. So I've added my Ford. If I clear that out, it clears out the associated value here. If I have them both set, and then I clear out the primary, it clears them both out again. Now, I know I could have just stored the value inside of this component, and we just could have retreated from there, but I wanted to, A, be able to show it in the UI, so I just created two other fields, changing the values inside of my related custom component updates these other values in a document. And then when you save the ticket, oh, I need to set the values. So hold on, let me set some values. Honda, Civic, save. It saves the values, and then if I look at the API, you can see that we have the object with the make and the model value stored. And if I bump up the depth, we can kind of get the whole thing laid out for us. So this is the app. Let's show the other components that are, the other collections that are used. Our makes component, we just have a name for our make. And then in our models, our models have a name and then we select the specific make that it is associated with. And the other components are just, yeah, the users and media, they're just the default components that come with the application. Okay, let's take a look at the code. All right, so let's start with our config. I'm using Postgres, but you can use any database that you want in the back end. Only other changes here are I'm importing my new collections, makes, models, and tickets. Let's quickly show the collection setups inside my collection folder. I have my makes, just the field of name, models, has the name field and it has a relationship with the makes. And then the interesting one is tickets. So the tickets has the name of the ticket. This is where my custom component is, so I'll circle back to that one. So our ticket has our name, it has a field for the makes and it has a field for the models, their relationships, you can see that they're required. but. They're marked as read only because this component, you can see it's taking in this property, the make path and a model path. It will update these fields for you. So let's take a look at the actual component. It's in this related custom component file. I have been making the server components, not really seeing the value in making them server components at this point. I think if I do any more examples, I'll, I'll make these um, just client components. All I'm doing, the work that I'm doing inside the component, you can see is I'm making this API call to kind of get all of my models. I could do that inside of a custom component, I mean, inside of a client component. And since this is really a UI based component, there's a lot of UI interaction. This component is really just a wrapper around this core custom select component that is doing the work. But let's just walk through it. That's me ranting. So I'm getting some props off of here. I'm not really using the path right now, but I'm using the payload object that I get passed in. With the payload object, I'm querying my collections model. I'm using a depth of two to make sure that I get the relationships back from them. Then once I get all of my models, I'm grouping the models by their make name. Basically, I'm creating this map. I'm creating a map that has a key that is the make name, and then it has an array of all the associated models. So. I create, I have my info and you can see the call here, get all makes, get all models by make. I pass my results in from this query into my get all models by make. That's my models list. I've introduced some types. Let's just quickly take a look at them. 
So I have my types file that has a make. This kind of reflects the collections that were created. I probably could have just generated uh, payload types and just used those. My apologies. I recommend that approach. So I have my make and then my make and then I have my model and my model has a make inside of it. So that covers all my types. So I pass in my collection of models or array of models. I create my map. Then I loop through each one of my models. I create an array of models. I call my models by make just to see if there already is an array. If there isn't an array, I pass an empty array. And then I add using the model name as the key. And then I pass in the array and then I add the new object that I got from the loop. I loop through all my models and then in the end I have this make by models object. And I console log it here. So let's just take a quick look at it. We can look at some of the previous API calls and we can see, we can see this is my make by models map and we have our key, which is Honda. And then the value is just this array of objects, basically models that match that key for the make. So there's my Honda and then there's my Ford. So that's what we have. So once we create that, then that is what we're actually passing into our, my custom select. Uh, so I'm passing my data in here. I'm passing in the two paths that I want to update, the make path and the model path. And then once again, this is just the path for the component. Not really sure I need it, but it's here. So now let's get the actual, actual component. Some other interesting things that I found, once again, I, once again, my request goes out. Anyone knows better than me. Like it's weird how some of these types aren't where I would expect them to be. I can access an option object here. Options. See, so options is available here, but the type option isn't available here. So that's just, I actually had to dig into the, well, this is where I found it. It might be somewhere else, but this is the only way I could find it. So that's my option type. These are my basic imports. Here's the parameters that got passed into my component. Not really using this right now, but this is basically how I get the field object for the path. Um, so if I wanted to kind of set the value on the fields, this is kind. This would be kind of how I could do it with the set value here. So the next thing I do is I have a state variable that shows the selected make and the selected model. I call this hook here to get the fields that I'm going to update later. So I have my make field and my model field. And then we have two use effects blocks that respond based on specific actions. So that's the main one. And this is the second one. So I have the main one, which updates the UI on the initial load. And then I have my secondary one, which updates the UI based on selections that you make to the components. So either on the make component or on the model component, we need to react to those user interactions and update the contents of the, of the uh, dropdowns. So that's what these two are for. So let's look at the first one. When the application loads, we take that map that got passed into us that has the key value pairs, the key, which is the make and then the array of models. And we loop through that based on the make name and we get the make name. So for example, it would be Ford. And so I would say, give me Ford. Then I get the array of models that are associated with Ford. And then what I do is I create, because this first set of options is for, I probably could rename that to make options, make options. So this is first set will be the list of all the different makes. And so I want to have the ID stored as a value and the label be the actual make name. So that when you see the drop down, you see the make name, but when you select one, I'm actually getting this ID because the ID is what I need to make the association. Set make options or set my component property because this make options will be used in the component. Then I look at my make field because remember also I need to populate the UI if there's already values defined when the person comes to the page. And then, so if I, if the make field, cause remember I got them up here, if the make field already has a value in it, I take that ID, I find the actual component that will include the ID and the label, which is the name. I set that as a selected make object. And then I take the selected make label and I get my array of models that appear in the next list. 
I loop through and create them all, and then I set my model options for the model dropdown. And then I'm using the handle primary change. I'm using these handle primary change and handle secondary changes as ways to trigger the UI to update themselves. So I call handle primary, primary change. And this should actually be handle make a change. So handle make change, and this should be handle model change for clarity. The, the initial version of this, I was trying to use generics and it started to get pretty hairy. And I'm like, let me just keep it simple for this example. And maybe I could do a more advanced solution um, that shows how to kind of make this whole thing generic. So you could use it everywhere in your app and just pass in types and all sorts of other crazy things to make it work for you. But so now I've just switched this so there's no more primary and secondary, it's make and model. So back up here, like I said, once you get the make, you call handle make change and it'll trigger updating that component. And then you get the model ID. And if there's a model ID, you get the whole model option, which includes the ID, I mean the value, which is the ID and the label. And then you call the handle model change and that will trigger the UI to update also. So that's on first load. So let me hide that. And then now, and let's, let's show that. So let's go back here. And we can see on the tickets. So I have a ticket, I have an associated make and model. And when I load, it, it updates it with the appropriate values as opposed to, leave it anyway. When I create a new one, the values are, nothing is preset. So now we're on the second one, to update the model when you make selection changes. So every time I change one of those, every time I change one of these, so if I change this, I need to update this array here and update these two fields. So that's what this use effect is for. So if no make is selected, then I just clear everything out. If I have make selected, then I take the label value, that's the key of my map, and then I get all the models that are associated with it. I loop through to create the options, and then I set the model options. Remember the second one's the model. And then I set selected to null, meaning that if there was an option selected before, clear it out. So that's what's happening here. All right. And then these trigger functions that I have, the handle make change, which are also actually used down here when the user actually does change an object. So when the user changes a make object, we set the current make to the value that they selected. We set the field to the value that was selected Remember, we're using the ID, so we'll set it to the ID, and then we clear out the model. Because every time the make changes, you got to clear the model. And then I set the model to null. And then when you change the model, this was a trick I had to do to get the UI to update based on the way how effects, like there's probably a more elegant way to do it, but basically what this does is it makes sure that the model component which is the second one, gets updated appropriately. Because what's happening, these things are all changing through use effects. Use effects are asynchronous. You can't assume they're going to fire in order. So what all, I'm, all this hack is doing is making sure that any changes to the make have completed, specifically this set selected model to null, before I try to set it to an actual value. Because otherwise, what's happening is that I'll set the value here, and then this set selected null comes along, and then it clears out my value, so I didn't have a value. Like I said, it's probably a more elegant way. This is what I did, then it works. So back to what I was saying. When you select from the second component, this one, you're selecting the model. If I have a value, I set it. And then I set my fields again. I just want to make sure, I probably don't need to set this make field here because it got set up above. So this is probably an extra flash that's unnecessarily. But basically what I'm doing is I'm setting the make field and the model field to reflect the values that were selected. The make field and then the model comes from this option that you selected here. And then the final part is just the UI. I spoke through all of the highlights. This is just a select component, the make options. This is the array of options that's shown. This make change gets called when you change a value. The selected make is what the selected value is and kind of the same thing down here for the model. I'm going to wrap it here. I want to keep this short. Please check the video description. I'll have a link to the source code. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Leave a comment or other things you'd like to see. Thanks and I will see you next time.